Hello darling and welcome to the broadcast. In this video I really wanted to speak about now I thought it was really really quite hysterical. I was looking on the Instagram the other day and I try not to play too much a part of it but it brought me to thinking about Halloween and it was me seeing this particular gal that had moved from the United States to England and she was talking about the different aspects of how the English view Halloween and how Americans view Halloween and I thought it was rather comical because it's so true Americans will go all out on you know decor on their home decor inside their house decor all over the place you know will decorate their their gardens of of all sorts of things and the English are very much pretty simplistic when it comes to um, Halloween and they will just basically put a pumpkin out and call it a day and I really love that aspect of it and it got me to thinking then about a particular thing that was happening when it when it comes to our lives and Halloween seems to be quite a not gory I mean I, I, I suppose it could be gory but I want to speak about it in the way that it is an opportunity to bring up the conversation of death and how the Victorians view death and how I think that we as a culture should begin embracing death. And the reason I'm saying this is because at this particular time of year, it's almost Halloween. And I think that it is so vital that for a mindset, when we speak and think about death, because me losing my son really, really gave me the opportunity to, I mean, I suppose that that sounds like a real weird thing for me to say, like given the opportunity, but you either take an experience that you've had in your life and you tuck it away and you don't talk about it and you continually work through your life with a massive amount of fear or you can take the bull by the horns and you can decide that you are you are no longer going to participate in the horror of how people look at death and what me losing my son did to me was helped me to relate and it helped me to understand like how the Victorians really, really understood this was the way that the Victorians were very much understood the nature of it is the cycle of life. It is a part of life. There is death, there is birth, there is sadness, there is crying, there is happiness. Everything is so intricately designed so beautifully and death is a part of that now when my son passed and he was murdered there became a point that i had to know what happened to him and where he is right now currently and nothing was going to solve that for me no preacher no pastor no bishop no parent no bible no anything and I really got serious with my higher self, with God, with the great creator, because I was determined that I would not stop until I un uncovered what happened to my boy. And what I learned, because we're always being given the answers to prayers or petitions or decrees or commands, if you want to call it that, because I did command. I commanded that I must know what happened to my boy and where my boy is. And I received the answers. And I know, just as the Victorians did, that there is no death. There is no death. There is a mall to death, but they are transitioning. And this is why I think spiritual people are so more much... Um, understanding of the cycle of life in that sense because the victorians were very much like that they were very much understood that they didn't see things as a as witchcraft they did not see things as you know sorcery 
and those things that Christian people and women especially that I grew up with, that I was raised around, that are still in religions, that have this absolute unwavering sense of stalwart stubbornness to understand and have compassion for people that are not like them, that they are different. And if there's one thing that I can talk about in depth is the understanding of death and the way that I understand it, the way that I know it. I don't only understand it, I know it. And it is because the only way you can know something without a shadow of a doubt is that you experience something in your life which takes you to that moment that you will either find reverie, you will either find disdain or hatred or anger or bitterness through the process of grief, or you can embrace it and know that without a doubt, I understand life completely differently and I understand death completely differently. And not only do I understand it, I know it and I know that I can teach it and I can help women especially women that are coming out of religion and the Christian Christianity as a whole, that they are so hell-bent on trying to create this division between people that do not understand it. Because it is, it is very much tied to the witchcraft because that's what so-called, I know that I have gifts and talents and abilities and psychic abilities. And I was always taught out of those things because it is considered demonic and witchcraft and all of those things. And I would just say that, that I would like to admonish people that are very staunchy in the sense that they are being extremely judgmental on people, especially people that are not like them. And this will probably cause quite a bit of brawl and well maybe not because you know what I'm not going to manifest that that will do it it's not going to it's actually going to manifest that people will begin to understand people will want to take notice people will want to begin to understand what's going on in life and that some people out there might have a bit of a uh, sour taste in the mouth because they don't understand because it's driven from fear and I do not believe, honestly, that I or other people that are spiritual, like me, that we are so different than anyone that still is a Christian or belongs to a religion or an organized religion. Because one thing I do know is that when you judge other people in the sense that, like, when I was judged, now I don't really care. I could care less either way. If you don't like me, that's really great. And if you do like me, that's really great as well. You know what I mean? I don't care anymore. But that's what it does to you. When you lose a child, you understand there's nothing that you can't, that you should fear anymore. Really, there's not much else that you would fear in life. So you recognize how life is so precious, how you should live your dreams, how you should create a fairy tale if that's what you choose to desire. And that's what you choose to create in your life you should always go towards your dreams because you only have one life and you don't know. I mean, I had no clue whatsoever that, that, that my son would be taken from me. I shouldn't say taken from me, but that he would transition um, at 24 years old when I'm 52, right? I mean, obviously I was in, I was in my late forties when that happened, but what you must learn, my darlings, and you don't have to experience losing a child to do that, is that you must understand that all of the things maybe that you've been taught through your religious upbringing, if you've been in religion and you've been a Christian, is that it might not be so quite right. Do you know, do you know what I mean, love? It might not be right. Because I used to think that I was a horrible, wretched person because I could see things in the future. I knew things. I was psychic even as a little girl. As, as early as six years old, I knew it. But I had been taught, taught out of it because that was something horrible and it was terrible and that I would go to hell 
or that I would spend an eternity with the devil. That's how I was taught. And then when I became a Mormon, I, it was that I would go to outer darkness. And so I concealed those blessings. I concealed those talents and abilities, my psychic abilities, all the things that I knew intuitively. And even when my son was born, Carter, when I had a near-death experience and I, and I was revealed certain things about me, or spirit revealed certain things about me that I still, you know, shoved them under the rug. And um, until me losing my son and then me understanding what death is and how connected the Victorians were because they knew that these were just talents and abilities. They were medicinal people. They weren't witches. You know what it was? It was a woman that was intuitive of her nature, the actual things that she knew naturally to be able to do. And it was the simple fact that perhaps men knew they couldn't control women like that because it is mother nature. It is mother earth. Mothers are so wonderful and healing and we have all of those gifts and talents in us but we have been taught out of them. So if there's anything that the Victorians and Halloween will show us is that let's begin to go back. Let's start again, you know? And if there's something that you know that you have a little bit of, you know, it's rubbing it on your wound, perhaps you might want to look at other women or people that are different than you as unique and lovely because we all are lovely. And this is a time for us to become, uh, to, to come together instead of being diversified and becoming separate and, and pulling away from one another. Because what I want to build is a community of women that are loving and kind and compassionate and show con unconditional love to one another. Because that's what this, this world is all about. This world is about becoming the greatest versions of yourself. And it's also about unconditional love. That's what this world is about love and becoming the greatest version of yourself and so i would like to leave that with you and i hope that you take it into consideration and might you ponder it for a bit and that i hope you derive some benefit from this video and i hope that you have a lovely halloween and as always i'm most affably yours until my next swim cheers darlings toodly pip